I know many of my stories are pretty dark, and, well, that is a reflection of the times we live in. But I do want to provide some hope and encouragement, because we need a little hope these days. So I want to tell you the story of Heather. I was teaching at the Phoenix Martial Arts School in the small town of Bolton back in the 90s. Run by the brothers Gino and Angelo, they taught Shotokan Karate every day until 9 p.m. Then I would teach my own group, Kung Fu, from 9 until 10.30. One of their karate students was a 12-year-old girl named Heather, which was appropriate because her parents were Scottish. One day her parents approached me and asked me if I would teach Heather the iron fan form of Kung Fu. They had been bringing Heather to numerous karate tournaments and she wanted to compete in the exotic weapons kata division. But no one knew any exotic weapons, except for yours truly. They had seen me practicing my iron fan form and thought that would be the ideal form for Heather to learn. This fell in line with my own philosophy. You see, the reason I learned the iron fan when I was in China was specifically so that I could give my future female students a specialty unique to women. I felt the iron fan was indicative of the female mystique. It was a beautiful, flowing, light, graceful form that embodies femininity, yet was subtly deadly. To be beautiful and deadly was my goal when teaching my female students, and to this day I have only ever taught Iron Fan to women. I agreed to teach Heather the Iron Fan, 15 minutes twice a week after her karate class and before my kung fu class. I didn't charge her parents for my teaching. Heather stood about four and a half feet tall, had long straw-colored hair that was always braided into a ponytail, and big green eyes. She was as cute as a baby bunny. If Norman Rockwell were to paint a Scottish lassie, he would choose Heather as a model. But what was really endearing to me about her was that she was very serious. She never acted like a little girl, but rather more like a samurai. Whenever I would make a correction to her form, she would reply respectfully, Yes, Sifu. On Tuesdays and Thursdays, I would teach Heather two or three movements from the kata and told her I expected her to practice those moves on her own between lessons. And she did. I always told my students that two or three classes a week is not enough and that they should all practice on their own between classes. I could tell if they did or not. Heather practiced because with every new lesson, I didn't have to repeat the previous lesson. She had already memorized the moves. After only a couple of months, Heather had learned the entire routine. I was so proud of her. It was while fine-tuning her movements that I noticed a brief expression of pain on Heather's face. It was there, but quickly suppressed. She tried to hide it, but I knew she was in pain. And then it hit me what the source could be. I berated myself for not having anticipated this. Despite the light and airy look of the iron fan, it was actually a pretty heavy weapon. In my hands, a large adult male, I could wield it with little difficulty, but in the hand of a 12-year-old girl, it was like an orchestra conductor using a 10-pound iron crowbar instead of a one-ounce wand. Heather's arm would have been very sore practicing the iron fan, but that was not the source of the pain. It was another aspect of the fan that I myself had also been injured by, but I had forgotten about. There are two methods of holding the fan. When the fan is closed, you hold it in your fist and wield it like a billy club or a sigh. When open, 
the base of the fan has to rest in your palm. Now the base is just a mass of steel with somewhat sharp edges. Practice for an hour and you will find a blister the size of a quarter right in the middle of your palm. Practice for another hour and the blister will have been torn to shreds. Practice one more hour after that and your palm is bleeding because all the skin has been worn away. I asked Heather to show me her hand and sure enough she was bleeding from her palm. I went and got my first aid kit that I always have with me when I teach and put some pain relief and antibiotic cream on her wound and bandaged it up with a soft gauze pad and bandage wrap. No more practice for today, I told her. Then I gave her some sports tape and showed her how to tape her hand up once she had healed. Heather went on to win dozens of trophies and was the darling of the karate tournament circuit. Her father gave me a big bottle of Crown Royale. I couldn't have been prouder if she was my own daughter. Lately, I have been lamenting the scarcity of real men in our world. In my humble opinion, being a real man is the ability to work through pain to achieve a goal without giving up. The ability to bleed for your art without complaint. Many men these days cannot live up to this standard. I don't say this because I'm trying to show what a tough guy I am. I say this because the standard by which I judge who is a real man was set by a 12-year-old girl. <laughs>